Hi, welcome back to the bench. Um, Fred here, um, Fred B. Radio. And we're going to be talking a little bit tonight about dim bulb testers, but not how to make a dim bulb tester. There's a lot of people out there showing you how to make a dim bulb tester. They talk about what a dim bulb test, some talk about what a dim bulb tester is supposed to do. Some just say that that's what they use when they're working on old radios without a lot of explanation. But tonight I'm going to, I'm going to get into something a little bit different that I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about on a dim bulb tester. Uh, and again, this arose, uh, this question arose, I thought people out there could use it because a question that came from a friend of mine um, telling me his dim bulb tester that he built wasn't working and he didn't know why. So with that, let's get right to it. Okay, so here we are, we're set up. And the reason I'm doing this on a dim bulb tester is I recently had someone that I know contact me and say, hey Fred, you know, I've been, I want to use a dim bulb tester. I built one, but it doesn't seem to be working. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? It's, it's not working. So I said, let me, I'll be right over. Let me take a look at what you've got. Maybe something's not wired right. Okay. So, so I get over there and I immediately see what his problem is. He built one, built one similar to mine. Double outlet, you can plug in, you can put the light here, it goes through. I'm not going to get into building one of these. What I want to talk about is light bulbs. So if I flip, I have the power on. If I flip the switch, now watch the light bulb. The light bulb should get bright and then dim down. The bulb is there to absorb the current Okay, I'm using terms that people are probably going to get upset with me, but it absorbs that rush of current going into the radio. Once the radio starts to warm up and come on to its station and, and settles down and everything's working right, the bulb dims down. Okay, if something is shorted in the radio, electrically shorted, the, the hot lead to, to neutral or um, a capacitor shorted to ground or something like that, the bulb will stay on brightly. So we have this flip to on, okay? And I'm gonna turn the radio on. I think I have everything on. Uh, yeah, let me try this again. Um, First thing, first thing first about working with a dim bulb tester, you got to plug it in. <laughs> okay, so I have it on. I'll move this a little bit closer. I'll turn the radio on again. Watch the bulb. See how bulb, how bright it got. Now it's dimming down. See, it's, which means now the radio is, is starting to draw the proper amount of current. It's still very dimly lit. And I'm going to get into a little bit. This radio takes a while to warm up. Again, tube radio. It's not instant on. Yeah, give it a minute. The radio is playing fine. Um, my wife is on the treadmill in the other room, and that is like a noise generator on AM. I'm going to turn the volume down, but... You can see the bulb is very dimly lit. That's the way it's supposed to work, okay? So let me shut this back off. I'll turn this off. And this is a, 
40 watt bulb. Okay. The way I have this set up is I have my bulbs in sockets. I can just plug them in. All right. So when I got to the gentleman's house, this is what we, what he had. And he thought something was shorted. The bulb was never getting dim. He didn't know what was going on. He said, Fred, there's something wrong with the radio. It's shorted, but I can't find out what it is. And he was going crazy trying to figure it out. Okay. So I'll tell you what the problem is. There's absolutely nothing wrong with his radio. Let's shut this off so we can see. This is an LED bulb. You cannot use an LED bulb in a dim bulb tester. Okay. In an LED bulb, you have circuitry. It converts the AC to DC and there's other components in there to drop the voltage and light up all the little LEDs that are in the bulb. So the bulb is always on. It will never go off, even once the radio warms up, okay? So his problem was he was using an LED bulb, okay? Now, this LED bulb, I believe, is a, is a 40 watt. It's supposed to give off 40 watts of visible light. I'm not going to get into lumens, okay? If you look at the side of the bulb, it tells you over here, it's 5.7 watts, okay? 5.7. I went online and got this chart off, offline, okay? So this is what an LED wattage is. So you'd have to get up to a 100 watt bulb to even get 17 watts. You need to be using either preferably an incandescent bulb or a halogen bulb. Why the two of these? These have tungsten filaments in them and the current going through them is what heats up and lights the bulb. The halogen for the same wattage has for the same same lumens has has lower lower wattage but it's listed as like a 40 watt bulb okay always try to get incandescent bulbs to use in your dim bulb testers i've got another bulb here okay this is a 100 watt bulb people say well you just use any bulb okay so let's plug this bulb in Turn this on, radio's on. Do you see the bulb lighting up? No, absolutely not. Bulb's not lighting up. Is the bulb dead? Is there something wrong? No, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the radio. You saw the radio was working. Here it comes, it's coming up. Okay, why then is this bulb not even lighting up? This 100 watt bulb will only light up if something shorts in this radio. Why is that? Okay, let me shut this back. Let me do a, let me do a hot swap with my 40 watt bulb. Again, you can see the 40 watt bulb is just barely lit. When it first came on, it got bright dimmed down. That's how it's supposed to work. It takes more current. This is a 100 watt bulb. It takes more current draw through this to light that tungsten filament at all. So right now when I plug it in, this radio is only like maybe 30 watts. So it's not even drawing enough through the bulb, the tungsten, to make it light. 
Okay, so that's the other the other side of this coin that I wanted to talk about is using the proper sized bulb when you're working on electronics and you want to use a dim bulb tester. If you're working on an All American Five, an All American Six, those are five or six tube radios. You don't need more than a 40 or even a 60 watt bulb will work, okay? But you don't want to get into using a 100 watt bulb. You want to be able to see the bulb get bright, dim down, so then you know it's working properly. You don't have any shorts in your radio. So please, take the time, scrounge around. I, I know they're hard to find. Um, I've got a stock of high wattage incandescent bulbs that I do not use in the house. I use them here specifically in my radio work so that I know what's going on when I plug it in. All right, I hope that clears up a little bit. I figured if one person had a problem, maybe somebody else would have a problem. There's a lot of, a lot of information out there about making a dim bulb tester, how you make the dim bulb tester. Not a lot of people that I've seen talk anything about using the proper wattage light bulb. And you can see why. 40, the 40 watt will light up. The 100, even, even a 75, I had this 75 here. Even the 75 will not uh, light up. So it's not pulling enough current. Okay, so... What I want to show, I'm going to swing this around here a little bit. I'm going to come down on the paper. See if we can see this here. So, what I'm showing you here is a 100 watt light bulb draws 0.83 milliamps of current. A 40 watt bulb draws 0.33 milliamps of current. That's found by using the Ohm's Law formula, I is equal to wattage divided by the voltage. So we know 120 volts, the bulb says 40 watts, 40 divided by 120 is 0.33. You can see that there isn't enough current being drawn through a 25 watt radio to light this bulb, okay? So what happens, what happens if you have a bulb has no markings on it? Well, your wattage is equal to the volts times the current. And I'll set that up in a second. Okay, so I have a bulb here of unknown wattage. Sometimes you'll come across bulbs this has been rubbed off, whatever, generic bulbs, no writing on them. You need to know what the wattage is, okay? You put your, let me swing down on this. This is my craftsman. You put the, you move the, the, the uh, probe from the volts over to amps, put this on amps AC. So now when I turn the light bulb on, okay, okay, what does it say? Now, it's because I gotta get, point 0.32, okay, point 0.32. All right, so now, Let's come back over to our formula here, okay? We know that the wattage is equal to 120 times 0.32, okay? So a little calculator here, 120 times 0.32 equals 
W or wattage is equal to 38.4. Okay. I have serious doubts that you're ever going to find a light bulb that's exactly what's on it. So I would label this as a 40 watt bulb. Again, easy way to find out what the wattage is on it. Just use your Ohm's law. Okay. And with Ohm's law, you can see the, the, uh, what the current draw is. Again, if you're working on a TV or a higher piece of equipment, you're going to need a higher wattage light bulb because of the higher current draw. Keep that in mind. So this is a, I don't know if anybody wants to take a picture of it, whatever. In the old days... E was electromotive force or voltage, okay? That's since been changed, I guess, because now everybody uses V. So it's V I times R, okay? Or W E times I, all right? So I hope everybody finds this helpful. And questions, comments... Um, again, this, this was all because somebody was using an LED bulb, uh, and they, they couldn't figure out why the bulb was never going dim. Okay. So I hope this helps. Thanks for dropping in. Hey, don't forget, click like, subscribe, leave some comments. Those that do leave comments know that I get back to them. Take care and have a great weekend. What's left of it.